18th contact Thursday, 15th May 1975, 9.34 p.m. Semyaza says before we discuss other things today I want to proceed with the teaching of the Spirit, as it is the most important of all things. The human tries to react to the word or the term creation as if the talk is of something very beautiful or good, whereby a change would be effected in his senses. However, that does not happen as long as he does not recognize creation as it really is. But how can the word and the title creation attain such a deep significance for the human that a change in his entire psychological way of behavior comes into being in his emotional awareness, his feeling of life, his ways of reacting, if he does not constantly and repeatedly contemplate the essence of creation. The human tries quite simply to bring certain indicative qualities, which are applicable in regard to the essence of creation, like, all-present, almighty, and, all-knowing, into interconnectedness with the word or the designation creation. The everyday person as well as everyone, the so-called atheist, the egoist and materialist, and the agnostic, find the word creation highly UN interesting. Yet why? To them it is entirely unknown, and they have no idea, what creation essentially is. But so it is with very many people with the term creation. Billions of people, misled through religion, do not understand the word creation. If they pronounce the unreal religious title, God, then, they are of the lost view that creation would be thereby named. Yet what a bad false teaching that is. Therefore it is very important to know as much as possible about the essence of creation and to bring it into experience therewith the word would be more meaningful, raised up internally and would leave behind an impression as soon as is it taken in hand. The experience reveals that the creation is unending beauty, a beauty above all beauty, borderless, intensive happiness without end, wisdom, knowledge, ability, truth and absolute determination. When that is recognized by the human then he leads every one of his joys instantly back to its origin, to the UN ending joy of creation. Wherever he sees something beautiful, be it now a flower, an animal or a human, or something else, he thus brings it instantly into interconnectedness with the infinite beauty of creation itself. Wherever the human sees cognition reach expression, in this or any form in an impressive and exalted manner, then he knows that it has its roots in the endless cognition which is creation. Wherever life stirs itself be it even in the tiniest being in a creature, as, for example, the microbe, there, behind this life he glimpses the infinite, the eternal and the creational. Out of that he attempts to deepen and expand his understanding and feeling through which he contemplates the essence of the creational and its inseparable presence at any time and in any space in many kinds of ways in the daily life and experience. Creation exists in every human as a fragment of himself. Once this thought has first deeply penetrated the human and become his experience, then any fear and all doubt in him disappear. If he knows that the creation is all-knowing and almighty then he gains in inner peace and security and is immune from stupid thoughts and wrong feelings. Repeated contemplation about the all-present, the truth, wisdom and the ability and knowledge of creation is constantly eternal, as dignity and worth, allows the word and the designation creation to become something very meaningful in the human to something which calls forth transformations in the feelings and transformations in his manner of thinking. The more his intelligence is effective in this direction the more he gains radiating light, the more powerful his personality would be and the more blessed his entire life and works would be. Again and again the human living in clarity of consciousness would produce in himself, anew, the strong perception that the creational is far more real than his body's feelings. This perception rules, without interruption, the human living in accordance with spirit. The creational grasps possession of his consciousness whereby his senses are full of peace, strength, joy, knowledge, wisdom, truth and hope. All the measures that the normal human grasps in his material intellectual thoughts in order to attain peace, happiness and strength always show themselves as deceitful, while the constant controlledness of the human who is living according to spirit would be pulsed through with the dynamic power of creation. 
He who is a human living according to spirit is very dynamic in all things. He attempts, uninterruptedly, to reach his goal as quickly as possible. As long as he lives he would, in accordance with this, use the time for applying the creational ability with all the energy available to him. He would never allow this undertaking to be lost. Everything possible can happen in the course of time, yet his desire for the creational would never be extinguished in him. He can strike hindrances in which he suddenly has no sense and taste any more for the necessary material things, yet he never loses the taste and sense for the creational because he knows that the creation embodies the true being. Only a human who fights hard for consciousness goods and spiritual goods and progress, for knowledge, truth, logic, wisdom and love harvests mighty fruit of a spiritual and consciousness kind, because they do not simply fall into his lap. First, before the first results would be obtained, it is required that the spiritual intellectual manner of thinking must learn the path of creational thinking and recognize its absolute correctness and determination. Yet when these first results come about then the cognizant one steps onward with great steps and expands himself in spirit and consciousness to a factor of power. First, through this, already known facts, knowledge, truth, logic, wisdom and love would be self-evident, which first, however, must be gained through hard work. Indeed, the path does not end at this point, because further seeking, further searching, further development and further recognition led into the borderless duration of time. Everything possible may happen in the course of time, and hold the human back from taking up deeds, yet the human living according to spirit knows no borders and does not allow himself to be kept from his goals by any kind of events or bad future outlooks. For him the future already exists in the present, so it is that everything must be done here and now in order to reach the highest spiritual and consciousness state. He does not know angst about the future and not angst before the future because they only exist in a material intellectual way of thought, but never in spiritual intellectual thinking, in which the future is as present as the present itself. Thereby the human living according to the spirit can, and may, solve the problems of tomorrow and the next day already here and now, and guide them in the desired paths. To think for and with the spirit brings only advantage to any life form. Therefore the human raises himself more and more through intensive seeking and searching in the state of spirit thinking and in the knowledge of the creational truth and wisdom. Again and again he produces in himself the strong perception that something is the which gives him a measurable power and makes him free from unreal assumptions, it is the truth of creation. Always again and again the human produces in himself the strong perception that he finds, in the ocean of creational light, his wisdom, his knowledge, truth, logic and love, which for him first entirely enables the being of life. The joy of the human who is turned towards creation exists as a result of his reverence produced from the creational and creation, it is this, in which he accepts the almighty will and the creational laws and turns the absolute determination of these laws to his own determination and practically employs them. He brings his dedication to the laws to expression through the learning and utilization of all spiritual and consciousness facts, but never through belief, assumptions, serving and humility. The only way to learn exists in the unremitting efforts and striving to obtain higher spiritual and consciousness cognitions and to bring the capabilities into application which have unfolded through this. Patience and endurance and the development of higher understanding, recognition and engagement of the cosmic and universal love, deepening of the spiritual and consciousness knowledge and ability, as well as the shutting out of material intellectual thought powers, like egoism, materialism, pride, envy, greed and jealousy and so forth, are thereby of decisive significance, because only this guarantees the recognition and obedience to the creational laws. The spiritually thinking human constantly works to guide creation to himself and to make it recognizable in himself, on the way to attempting to make possible that which is impossible for normal people, and indeed with success. Day after day, month after month and year after year the human who is devoted to the spirit calls on the creational and thereby gains in knowledge, wisdom, love, logic, truth and power, 
until he finally experiences the creational in himself, and may get the full useful value of it, whereby it will be more real to him that the feelings of his body. While he maintains social intercourse with other people and speaks with them he sees only the creational before him. While he sees others before him, he sees only the creational in them, because for him the creational always stands in the first position. Among all things, for him the creational is the all-greatest, therefore in himself everything is confronted with the creational, and material things may no longer awaken desires in him. He has no more materialistic temptations, because that which he conceals within himself as spiritual and conscious knowledge and ability is his dialogue partner and his guide. He speaks and converses with it and he lives with it in the given laws of the creation. To live this way means being in truth, and this being is incomparably more beautiful than the most beautiful appearance of the universe. Nothing may bring such a developed human any more into temptation, not the greatest wealth of the world and not one death threat aimed at him by an evil-sensed creature. His inner wealth in the creational is inexhaustible and imperishable and nothing may awaken some such fear in him because that with which he lives and which enlivens his being is infinite power. Therefore nothing may mislead him to you in truth and falseness because his entire being is in the creational cognition of infinite truth. Nothing may wrongly lead him into the darkness of misleading thoughts from external powers, because any fragment of a second of his spiritual intellectual thinking is infinite light. Nothing may change his being sense of the truth or make him unhappy, because he lives in the being of creation and in its sense and he lives in new and ending joy. If the human however, has a bad or negative attitude regarding the spiritual things of life, about himself and creation, then he will not flourish at all. Even a very opportune circumstance which would otherwise be very valuable would, to him, be a source of unhappiness and strife if his attitude is only material intellectual and his thoughts and feelings in this form also influence the environment. Even if the concerned human pursues still such good intentions the results in this case would be entirely negative. But for the human who lives according to the spirit everything and anything would always be the correct circumstances to lead to inner growth and would be a very good opportunity for the creational in every form to pay its tribute. Great in truth is only any human who constantly carries and maintains high and noble spirit thoughts and spirit feelings in himself and one can only name as creational any human who constantly lives and thinks in the consciousness of the creational. That means that the material intellectually great human can be just as fully UN creational and spiritually absolutely insignificant, just as can also peace instigators, religious saints, helpers in need misery and sickness, and, not the last, those who in wars, and so forth, stand at the foremost front and perform sanitation service and so forth. Mostly, that kind of human would only be driven by adventure lust, pity and self-pity, and other wrong material intellectual thoughts, and the feelings resulting from that without the least recognition that he possesses the creational within himself. Very often they are only led through UN real religions, that preach false neighborly love and equally false divine teachings and formulas for humility. Yet where now exists the difference between such life forms and the human who lives in accordance with the spirit? The normal human in general allows himself to be led and conquered by lower material intellectual sentiments. Had he good feelings once then these are never constant and soon disappear again to again make room for lower sentiments. He who, on the contrary, is a human living according to the spirit, never allows the smallest creational sentiments to fade away, rather he grasps them and expands them into the infinite. Lower sentiments do not find an anchor place in him, because the waters of wisdom and knowledge in him are too deep for a low and short anchor chain to be able to reach its ground. He who is a human living according to the spirit attempts constantly to maintain himself always, and under all circumstances, in the vibrational realm of creational motions. Should these once, through some kind of influences, be in danger, then he calls on creation in the highest power and thus protects himself in its highest vibrational power, from the negative. 
in this man he proceeds so far along until the creational essence in him has produced the absolute